Hello, yes. For the final part of the accents of Westeros, before I start to look overseas at Essos and beyond, it's time to analyse the accents of the Night's Watch. Well, the ones I haven't previously covered, and the Wildlings, along with some of the general peasants that live near the Wall. To begin, we have Alyssa Thorne. Gruff and surly, Alyssa doesn't seem to enjoy being in the Night's Watch very much. Despite hailing from the Crown Lands, he speaks with a northern accent tinged with a touch of Welsh. Eating the horses was easy. But later when we started to fall, that wasn't easy. Dolorous Ed is miserable and world-weary. He hails from the Vale, but sounds like he's from the North. There must be a magical force field that turns people northern as soon as they travel past Moat Kaelin or somewhere. When the White Walkers came, you left me. Aye, we left you. You're fat and you're slow. We didn't want to die. Pip, or Piper, is from the Riverlands and does have a southern accent, so well done, show. You got something right. I've got one. Right through the heart, he's dead. Oh, is it over? Well then. Gren is another northerner in accent, if nothing else, as we don't know where he hails from originally, aside from the fact he grew up on a farm. They get him up. Looks like that piggy is done for. Let's get him up. Slowing us down. Just get him up! Ollie was just having a nice day working with his dad before the wildlings slaughtered everyone in his village. Speaks with a northern accent. Telling the wildlings you want to make peace. You're just doing it to trick them. It's not a trick. They burnt my village. They put an arrow through my father's head. Ollie's dad was dreaming lustily of his wife's potatoes when he caught an arrow, ending his appetite and his life. Also speaks with a northern accent. Potatoes. Well, no one boils a potato better than your mum. She got the. The horse ranch owner that Jon Snow fails to kill has an accent that's hard to place, but sounds roughly of the north, I suppose. Let me stand at least. Let me go with a bit of dignity. The woman named only as Mole's Town Whore has a riotous Cockney accent for some unknown reason. Perhaps she travelled up with a relative heading to the wall and decided to stick around to make a quick buck or two. You hear me? Yes. Got anything to say? I'm sorry he woke you up. <laughs> I don't care if you're sorry. Carl Fucking Tanner, who clearly states he is from Gin Alley in King's Landing, also has a northern accent. I was a fucking legend, Gin Alley. A fucking legend! Honestly, it gets so tiresome. Rast, the sensitive, gentle soul, doesn't have an official place of birth, but speaks with a northern accent, so fair enough there. I wouldn't stand a chance. None of us would. Othel Yarwick, well, you'll never guess what, he has a northern accent too. Unfortunately, he's from the Westerlands, where they don't sound like that. My mother's still living in White Harbour. Could you write it? Tell her I died fighting the wildlings. Bowen Marsh is from the Neck, the boggy part of the North. Speaks with an appropriate accent. You shouldn't be alive. It's not right. Neither was killing me. Corin Halfhand is another Night's Watch member with no confirmed place of origin, and as such was given a Northern accent on the show. There's a fire. People sitting around it have better eyes than yours or mine. When they see us coming, that fire becomes a signal. Mance Raider was born beyond the wall and taken in by the Night's Watch before rebelling. Speaks in a northern accent. So, you're Ned Stark's bastard. Thank you for the gift, Lord of Bones. You can leave us. Tormund Giantsbane, the wildling warrior who has a serious crush on Brienne, speaks with a Scandinavian accent, which is a nice touch given the geography of the area. Plenty of little men try to put the swords through my heart, and there's plenty of little skeletons buried in the woods. Rattleshirt, the Lord of Bones, had a northern accent in Season 2, but seems to have adopted the more common Scandinavian one in Season 5. 
Perhaps he was just pretending to impress Egret. We may never find out. We killed his friends. I thought we want to question this one. Last time I saw you, the little crow was your prisoner. The other way around now. 1-1 one, one, the giant gets a line for comedy effect, and I have no idea how to class it, so it will be designated giant ease. Don't keep it on. Lobada, the surly fen, speaks with a light Scandinavian accent. Keep your glass, King Crow. As soon as you get on his ships, they're gonna slit your throats and dunk your bodies to the bottom of the shivering sea. Magnar of the Fen has a much more pronounced Scandinavian accent and makes for a very authentic performance. Those your parents. Open your eyes. I'm going to eat them. Oral, the walk and number one egret sib, speaks with a northern accent when he's not cawcawing in eagle form. The fist of the first man. What did you see? <laughs> Dead crows. Jon Snow's Stockholm Syndrome girlfriend Egrip has a northern accent and really likes using it. Last time you seen a giant, Jon Snow? I don't stay too long, they're shy. When they stop being shy, they get angry. Carsey, despite having a name that's slang for a toilet, certainly doesn't resemble one. Speaks in a Scandinavian accent. The show's really on a roll with a diversity of wildling accents. No sarcasm, it really is. I'll never trust a man in black. But I trust you, Torment. If you say this is the way, Craster, the miserable old prick who begrudgingly helps the Night's Watch at times, speaks in a roaring Welsh accent for some unknown reason. Yeah. They're as strong as they can again. Then that's dying. When you cut their throats to be done with it. I'll leave them if you've not the stomach. And I'll sort them myself. Gilly, Craster's daughter, sounds very northern. How do you know all that? I read about it in a, a very old book. You know all that from staring at marks on paper. Leaf, the child of the forest, speaks with an eerie southern accent in season four, and then the recast version in season six sounds much more RP. He is lost. Come with me or die with him. Brandon Stark needs you. What? I sit in there and I watch him have his visions and nothing ever happens. He isn't going to stay here forever. The Three-Eyed Raven is a standard posh bloke in Season 4 before being replaced by legendary actor Max von Sydow who was allowed to use his native Swedish accent in Season 6. I've been many things. Now I am what you see. I was waiting for you. I don't want to be you. <laughs> I don't blame you. You won't be here forever. Overall, I'm awarding the Night's Watch and the Wildlings seven fooked Carl Tanners out of seven. Thank you for watching. Next time, as I say, we're going overseas to Essos, so expect an announcement on where exactly we're going to land in the coming weeks. Bye then.